From Beyond is a classic tale of monsters from another dimension who come into our world, make a giant snake-looking penis come out of your forehead, and also make you really, really horny. Welcome to the Movie Squib channel. I'm your host, Charlie. Now, before we dive into this juicy little movie, I just want to say one thing. Make sure that when you're watching my videos that you are using an ad blocker. You see, I'm kind of at war with YouTube right now. I've gotten a ton of my videos copyright strike, even though I've significantly altered them. So you know what? I'm going to do my videos now with a lot of stills and any moving pictures will be from the trailer. That way, YouTube can't try to copyright strike me. Also, I really don't care about the money. So please, for the love of God, download an ad blocker. They're free everywhere. But I encourage you to use an ad blocker on my videos because I don't want to give YouTube a single red cent, even if it means I get nothing as well. With that little rant out of the way, let's get into Front Beyond. So there's a lot to love about this film. I haven't watched it in a really long time, but I watched it on Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, it's on there. It's a great American science fiction body horror film. It's weird. It's gross. It's fantastic. The uh, movie came out in 1986 and it stars Jeffrey Combs, Barbara Crampton, Kem Forey and Ted Sorrell. Now those are our main characters. Uh, there's a couple of other side characters. There's a detective that shows up in the beginning of the film and then at the end of the film, but that's about it. And then you have this female doctor who's a total bitch. She shows up a couple of times during the film. But anyway, one of the things I love about From Beyond is that when it starts out, it just throws you right into the deep end. There's no starting credits, not until a few minutes into the film. You just immediately show up on Jeffrey Combs and he's got this weird looking face like he looks like he's just nervous and uh, weird or something like that. I call him tiny mouth because he's got this he's got this mouth that he makes this this face that he makes with his mouth and his mouth gets really small. So um, yeah, I, I always think of him as tiny mouth. So Jeffrey Combs is creating this machine called a magnetic resonator. Basically what it's going to do is it stimulates your perennial gland. Now what happens is Jeffrey Combs ends up turning on the magnetic resonator and it looks like there's something floating in the air. It looks like a floating worm. Actually what it looks like, if you've ever played the game Seaman on Sega Dreamcast, that's what it looks like to me. Anyway, it ends up biting him, so he turns off the machine. Now, he lets this other doctor know called Pretorius. He tells them that the machine works, but that, like, something came through and bit him. Dr. Praetorius, he's, like, so excited that it works. Praetorius ends up turning on the machine. It goes crazy. Jeffrey Combs panics and ends up leaving. And then when the police arrive, they find Praetorius' body with his head completely gone, and there's no blood, and Jeffrey Combs is arrested for murder. Now, this is where things get... <laughs> really really weird so we're introduced to two characters here number one is bitch doctor she's the one who thinks that jeffrey combs has schizophrenia and she wants to treat him with like whatever treatments they have shock therapy and so forth and then you have lady doctor here which when i first saw this movie my immediate thought was she better get naked because she looks ridiculously hot but when you first see her she's like covered in all these jackets she's all like puffed up it's really funny so lady doctor she says like oh i believe him and i think that um maybe he's not crazy so lady doctor ends up having a cat scan on jeffrey combs and then they see that his perennial gland is growing so she thinks that he's telling the truth so lady doctor says look you're gonna release him into my custody and i'm gonna treat him bitch doctor doesn't like it but there's a cop there who says like look this is what's gonna happen because it's gonna help in my investigation so lady doctor is accompanied by a detective bubba brownlee which look at this picture tell me he doesn't look like anthony mackie he looks like anthony mackie if Anthony Mackie did a lot of HGH. So now you've got your three main characters. You've got Jeffrey Combs, you've got Lady Doctor, and you've got Anthony Mackie. Now, Lady Doctor ends up taking Jeffrey Combs back to the house where he had the magnetic resonator, and she tells him that she wants him to continue the work and turn it back on, which is a horrible idea. Also, why? Why does she want to turn it on? She's so obsessed with 
this magnetic resonator and the perennial gland, but why is she so obsessed with it? They never mention anything about it. Anyway, he ends up turning on the device and they end up seeing the other doctor, Praetorius, and he's like naked and covered in slime. Then Praetorius's head explodes and these like gigantic arms come out. So Jeffrey Combs is able to shut it off on time before the arms end up grabbing them. Now, later on, they're all sleeping and they're having some weird dreams. Lady Doctor goes upstairs and turns on the magnetic resonator. And then that's when things get weirder than they already are. You see, this magnetic resonator and the expanding of the perennial gland makes them horny. So anyway, deformed Dr. Praetorius ends up grabbing Lady Doctor and he's all like slobbering all over and it's really gross. He ends up ripping off her dress and grabbing her boobs and I wanted to see this girl's boobs but not like this. It ruins it for me. But at the same time it's awesome. So Jeffrey Combs runs to go get Anthony Mackie and then they go down the stairs and then there's this gigantic worm monster blocking their way and then Dr. Pretorius' head opens up. There's this gigantic monster mouth coming out it looks a little bit like an ant it's got uh the incisors like an ant is that what they're called incisors i don't know anyway jeffrey combs is battling the big worm monster bubbly goes to get a knife lady doctor is battling this mouth monster it is just absolutely insane anthony mackie ends up stabbing the worm and like vaseline jelly comes out of it and then they cut to this perfect shot both Lady Doctor and Jeffrey Combs getting their heads almost bitten off. It is just perfect. I loved it. I love this scene. So Anthony Mackie ends up pulling the wires and ends up finally cutting the power off and these monsters end up disappearing. Jeffrey Combs, who comes out of this whole situation looking really messed up, like his hair is completely gone and then his head starts to get all weird looking. He's got like these red marks all over his body. So because of this magnetic resonator machine, everybody's like getting horny. Well, everybody except Anthony Mackie. It seems like he's able to hold off on it. But Lady Doctor especially, she's so horny now. And uh, Jeffrey Combs, well, I mean, he's all beat up now. But in the beginning, he was kind of horny as well. So Lady Doctor ends up finding all of this S&M stuff and she puts it on. So Lady Doctor puts on the S&M outfit. She puts on the lipstick. She gets all pretty. And then she jumps on top of Jeffrey Combs. It is just so weird at the same time lady doctor's got a beautiful juicy bottom like uh, i wish i could show you but youtube's not gonna let me because youtube sucks balls but trust me when i say that it is a grade a piece of meat anyway so lady doctor gets caught riding a disabled jeffrey combs and then lady doctor tries to seduce anthony mackie but anthony mackie's about to fall for it and then he pushes her away so then the magnetic resonator turns on by itself and again i don't understand how this happened but it just turns on then all of a sudden there's these flying blueberries and they're just everywhere and they're attacking jeffrey combs and lady doctor the power cords that anthony mackie removed earlier are fused together now and he can't remove them and anthony mackie ends up actually cutting the wires but then the wires just still connect and power through so this machine really isn't stopping so anthony mackie in a desperate attempt ends up flashing the flashlight at them i don't understand how he knows that that does anything but he flashes the flashlight and then the flying blueberries attack him when he throws the flashlight on it, it, it it's so weird. I, I don't understand this part, even replaying it. So like the blueberries are attracted to the light, but they were attacking both Jeffrey Combs and Lady Doctor without the light. It's so odd. But there's this gruesome death with Anthony Mackie where he gets eaten alive by the flying blueberries. It's really great practical effects. Really gruesome too. Then we get a shot of Dr. Praetorius in a new form. He's got this head that's like protruding like a big 
penis. And then he's got one hand that looks like alien claws and another that looks like a baby hand. Again, really great practical effects. I genuinely enjoy movies like this. I enjoy the amount of time and effort that they spend in how they made these uh, monsters look. They're fantastic and they look gruesome and gross and disgusting. You know, it's, it's difficult to find newer movies that are like this. And I'm not saying that they don't exist. They do exist out there, but they are few and far between. But I guess, in a way, From Beyond is few and far between as well back in its day. So, you know, you go with what you got. Anyway, let's move on. So Praetorius Monster ends up grabbing Lady Doctor and then like he's got this little worm thing that comes out of his forehead, which also Jeffrey Combs ends up getting. And it is it's fantastic. It's it's so gross looking. It looks like a little antenna. Anyway, that's basically the perennial gland like it allows him to see in predator vision. It's really odd. Now, Lady Doctor does manage to shut down the machine. Then she tries to help Jeffrey Combs. Combs. Jeffrey Combs looks like shit. His head is all like protruding that thing. It's oh, it's so gross. Now she ends up calling an ambulance and two things happen which are really interesting. Number one, she gets committed because she gives the same story that Jeffrey Combs gives to the doctor and the uh, cop. The cop is all pissed off because Anthony Mackie is dead and that was one of his officers, one of his best officers, he says. So he ends up saying to bitch doctor, he says, you you know what do what you will with both of them so bitch doctor ends up letting lady doctor go get electroshock therapy they get interrupted because jeffrey combs is loose and so jeffrey combs ends up eating a brain but it doesn't explain why it just he just goes and eats a brain so bitch doctor ends up telling him like you know come with me and he doesn't do anything at first and then his little perennial gland sticks its head out and he just ends up sucking her brain through her eyeball and it is just perfect. So Lady Doctor's about to get shocked, and then just as this dickhead's about to shock her, like all these people come in and telling the guy that there's an emergency. So Lady Doctor ends up knocking out dickhead, and she ends up escaping. Now, Jeffrey Combs is outside, but he can't really yell at her, so he couldn't flag her down. But an ambulance comes in, and then Jeffrey Combs' perennial gland kicks into high gear again, and he ends up sucking the brain out of a EMT, although the EMT... MT ends up escaping, but unfortunately Jeffrey Combs just gets mad. He cracks her head on the floor, perennial glands going all nuts. And so he decides to steal the ambulance and head out. Now, Lady Doctor and Jeffrey Combs both decide to go back to the house. And this is where things really go off the rails. Lady Doctor goes there with a bomb. How? How the hell did she get the bomb? I, I don't understand. Every time I watch this scene, I'm like, wait, I'm like, where, where did she get that dynamite from? And the clock, the little ticking clock, I... I doesn't make any sense and so she's about to blow up the machine when jeffrey combs come in jeffrey combs ties her up and lady doctor's pleading with him to let her go the little perennial gland's coming out i guess it's controlling him now she ends up biting it like a slim jim and it comes out and then the machine starts up which again how the how the fuck does the machine start up how how did it start up by itself but now her biting off the perennial gland ends up waking up Jeffrey Combs from his stupor. So the machine turns on and Praetorius comes back. He ends up grabbing Lady Doctor, but Jeffrey Combs is trying to fight him. Praetorius starts chasing Jeffrey Combs and then all of a sudden it grows wings and starts flying down. And uh, I mean, this part doesn't look that good. This this looks bad, but it's hilarious because like it flies down and knocks him down. And then the little incisors come out again, start chewing on Jeffrey Combs' head. Oh, it's fantastic. And it twists his head. You could see his head twisting inside the mouth and it is absolutely fantastic now unfortunately we get the floating seamen again they're coming after lady doctor but she ends up like shaking her hands so that they can bite her restraints off which is pretty genius but also quite a gamble 
I mean, I'm shocked that it works. So these little seamen, they're attracted by movement, but she's still moving. So they should technically see her as she grabs a book of matches. She ends up lighting up the matches. She throws it to the side. It distracts the little seamen. She runs down the stairs to find Jeffrey Combs's headless body. And then the gigantic monsters start chasing her. Water starts pouring down from the upper level. I don't know. Again, I don't know why. But then all the tentacles start coming out. There's these fantastic, huge tentacles that are just like closing doors and coming after Lady Doctor. It's great. So 30 seconds left on the clock for the explosive. Dr. Praetorius monster ends up grabbing Lady Doctor by the leg. And then more awesomeness occurs. Jeffrey Combs comes out of Dr. Praetorius. He rips out of him with a full body. So his head got eaten by Dr. Praetorius, but now he's alive and he's just coming out. This all happens and takes probably about 30 seconds, but only 10 seconds go by on the bomb. It's so gross. Hands are coming out of Praetorius and they're grabbing him and they're ripping him apart from the inside. Jeffrey Combs is like a skeleton at one point with slime all over him. Lady Doctor ends up jumping out of the third story window and survives. Now, to be fair, she falls down and shreds open her leg, but still, she gets up and she's like talking. She should have her ribs completely shattered. The neighbors are outside. They're like, gee, what's going on? Nobody helps her. They're just looking at her. They're like, oh my God, what happened to you? And then the final shot has the lady doctor screaming and laughing. Basically, she's gone mad. After everything that has occurred, she has gone completely mad. Probably she's also in shock because her bone is sticking out of her leg ah what a movie and then you cut to credits like this movie again from the beginning it throws you into the deep end the credits don't appear until five minutes into the film and it just throws you right in and then the movie just ends abruptly with no closure on what's going to happen to lady doctor although my guess is that lady doctor is going to go to jail for a long time considering that she escaped that mental hospital and she knocked out that dickhead guy so yeah she She's probably going to be locked up forever. And uh, Jeffrey Combs is dead. I, I mean, but here's the thing. Are the, is the monster going to be there when the cops show up? Because what do the cops say to that? If you're a detective or you're a police officer and you walk in and you see a monster like this, would you, what do you, what do you do? I mean, do you lock up that woman? Like, I, I'd believe her at that point. I'd be like, well, I mean, look, there's a monster there. Like, obviously she's, she's telling the truth. I'd love to see a movie like that. I'd love to see a movie where the movie takes place after a monster attack and there's actual proof and people are just losing their shit over the fact that there's actual proof like you know detectives are looking at it cops are looking at it the government wants to get involved and everybody's like holy shit like this is real like what the f what the fuck do we do it's something that i think would be fascinating to explore anyway on a whole i really enjoyed from beyond it's just a weird sci-fi hp lovecraft style movie great practical effects the other special effects are pretty dated, but um, it, there's just a weirdness to it. It's a movie that will have you thinking about it for a few days after you're done watching it. I like those type of movies. I like movies that you watch it and then after you're done watching it, you think about certain characters or certain situations in the movie and you're like, huh. I wonder if so-and-so character survived or so-and-so character is going to be okay. Stuff like that. Thank you once again for listening to my videos. You all have a wonderful evening. Take care.